Yeah, that was easier to just start. Hi everybody, welcome to Concrete with the Hosses. Uh, we've gained so many subscribers, the channel's growing. I uh, thought it would be a good idea just to introduce myself a little bit. Uh, I'm Tom Haas. I started TSH Concrete about 35 years ago. Um, I was 22 years old at the time, so do the math. Um, I've had a great time uh, pouring concrete for most of my life. I enjoy it. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I get to get up every morning and uh, go do something that I just really love to do. Um, I have two sons that work side by side with me and they've turned out to be really good workers. I couldn't have done near the amount of work without them. I have a daughter Emily that's working with me uh, with production of the YouTube channel. Uh, my wife Donna runs everything in the office and this company would not have survived a day without her. And I have uh, four other employees that just do a great job. Um, everybody brings something to the table and watch our videos and, and you'll see that everybody contributes 110% every day. And uh, just wanted to say thanks for subscribing. Uh, hope you enjoy the videos. Keep the feedback coming. Uh, help me grow the channel. Thanks again. Nobody's here yet, so I'll give a quick little introduction of what we're doing here. This is a concrete jump rock that I poured maybe two years ago, and we have water coming off at two different levels. Uh, I poured this retaining wall a few years ago. Uh, it turned out really cool, so I just brought that same look down into my jump rock. Whenever we first put the pool in, I just had a real small one there, and it was fun and neat. And then we redid some things around here, so we just upped this a little bit. And I put some low voltage lighting underneath it, and you can see the spillways coming off it. I'll get all this stuff hooked up here, and we'll turn it on for you. And then we just made some steps going up it. I put some low voltage lighting uh, recessed in two of the steps so I just have a couple pictures of this this is before the YouTube channel started this is our forms that we have in place and we just shovel concrete in place and the crookeder the forms are the better it turns out uh, you just strip those away and as the concrete is pretty tight you just start chipping away at it with hammers and chisels and shovels and picks depending on how tight the concrete is and you just shape it uh, however you want and it was a lot of fun to make and I wish I had some better video for you but maybe we'll do another one uh, in the future hey everybody you saw the uh, jump rock that we did down there by the pool um, the last piece of the puzzle down there is I want to put fire to it and uh, don't tell Mrs. Haas, but we're going to do this, and I think she'll like it when it's all said and done. Um, everybody said I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, I went ahead and tried it anyways because I reached out to a couple different people to do a project this small. Nobody wanted, nobody was interested, and in, in it just wasn't working. So I wasn't getting anywhere. I figured I'd just try it. So I bought a piece of uh, half inch stainless steel tubing and I went ahead and threaded the ends which they said it was too hard I wouldn't be able to do it and then I went ahead and drilled eight inch holes in it an inch apart and they said it'll be too hard to drill it'll just spin off and break so I'll show you how I did all that I got a cobalt drill bit real high steel drill bit um, 
and it worked uh, pretty simple. Um, so I'll show. You. I made one to make sure it would work, and I'll show you how I, I'll make the other two. So my length is uh, 14 inches, 20 inches, and 24 inches. So just mark it at 20. And the other way, 24. And come on back here. So I just have this bandsaw that I use. And I cut everything in this. Uh, so it cuts through it real nice. I just roll this edge off a little bit. After I round off the edges, taking the sharpness away, um, I start laying out for my holes for the flame. And I just uh, measure them about an inch apart. And then I take my spring-loaded center punch and make a little indentation for the small drill bit so it doesn't just spin off of the pipe. So the spring-loaded center punch is a lot easier than the one you have to hold and hit with a hammer. It just goes a lot quicker. So then I'll move back to the drill press here in a minute and uh, just punch a little hole through it. And you just got to drill nice and easy. That stainless is pretty hard. And I didn't even break one single drill bit. So that went real well. Uh, a lot of holes to drill but it went, it went pretty, pretty fast. All the holes are drilled. I'm pretty nice. What I wanted to mention though, uh, I was struggling with running out of battery life on the camera. So what, what I did, I went on Amazon and picked up these pocket juices they're called. You can just plug them right into the wall and charge them. And then it has a dual USB port and you can plug them right into the side of the camera here sorry right into the side of the camera and it'll run this camera all day uh, before whenever I first started video and I'd set the camera up and think we're getting great footage and go back and it's dead 20 minutes later so if you're uh, trying to do videos out there I highly recommend these pocket juice little cord you can tape it to your stand and it'll run your camera all day so uh, I think Emily will she's not in her head yeah she'll go ahead and post it on the channel with a little what's that called huh a link Amazon link sorry and ask me about concrete all right back to drilling the next challenging part is threading the ends. Uh, the stainless is real hard. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't do this with a power one because it would break the jaws. So I just worked at it for a little while and got my hand threader to, to eventually cut them in. And uh, it took some effort, but it went, uh, went okay. 
Get you close up in there. You can see where it's cutting right there. So you're just peeling that metal right off. Flip that, clean those threads out. See them pop loose. Let's start over. Okay. Everything's threaded and drilled. I'm gonna go get cleaned up, clean this mess up a little bit, and we'll get it put together. Okay, so I'm ready to start assembling everything. I got my burner tubes with all the holes in, all my three different lengths, the caps, the 90s, compression fittings, or I'm sorry, flared fittings. And then that'll all go to my hose. And then through the concrete, underneath the propane bottle will be connected here. And then through the regulator, I have three different lines that I can turn on, into, on and off individually. Uh, this is a high flow regulator. So it's, it's, you know, we'll get way more flame than a gas grill. We should be able to get a nice flame out of this. Um, one thing about this, I don't, I just learned this recently. Uh, this old propane fitting, the old style, uh, fits in the newer style propane tanks. Just got to remember it's reverse thread. Uh, this is what I got with the regulator. So we'll stay with that. If that becomes a problem, I can take this off and put the new, you know, with the hand uh, knob on it that you don't need a wrench. But we'll go this direction for now. Uh, but just wanted to point out, these are interchangeable with new and old bottles. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all uh, pipe doped up, the joint compound get them all sealed up, get them tightened, and then once it quits raining a little bit, I'm gonna do a test light and see if this thing works. Put these pockets in here, right in here. One, two, three, one up here. So that's why I did these bars right here and these are going to set right in there right like that and I'll cover them in glass rock right in there my longest one goes in the center and then number three goes in right here so I'm going to go ahead and hook those up and this will complete this project other than I'm going to go ahead and attach a handrail up here uh, we get a lot of little kids crawling on here, and I always have to stand guard right here. Uh, and I'd like to not have to worry about that. So, um, we'll go ahead and get that on here. But, I wanted to get these hooked up before we ran out of summer. So, underneath here, there's the manifold I just put together. Everything goes underneath there. And then I'll build a door over this. We'll leave some nice holes in that door so we get plenty of airflow in here. We don't want to, we don't want propane gas building up in here. So we're going to leave plenty of ventilation for that bottle. So you can see my water feed lines coming up right behind it, as well as my low voltage wires. Uh, so I have nice access to everything. I hung a box right there for those. So th I think it's coming together pretty nice. I uh, put some forms in here, then stacked styrofoam in here. 
during the pour and then after the pour I just dug all the styrofoam out to leave that cavity so pretty neat so I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff hooked up I think I hear a helper coming down now might take a little while to get the propane up here I can't hear it coming out. I can hear it. It blows. <laughs> that might hurt that concrete, huh? Right. Yeah, I can turn it down. How are we even going to get up there? It blows. Then the glass rock, I'll get it positioned away from the concrete. Good. That's one. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Two. And three. And three. What yeah. do you think, boys? Awesome. Awesome. I've been working two years to get this done, so this is a big, exciting day. What do you think? Awesome. Who's going to jump in the fire first? Me. No. I believe it. No, in that? No, I'm not jumping. So my helpers and I had a lot of fun building this jump rock, and we're going to have a lot of fun using it. Let's go. Get a ball!